This video is sponsored by Brilliant. The cosmological principle. This says that on a large scale, the universe is homogeneous and isotropic. Homogeneous just means that if you take any large chunk of space, it will look basically the same as another large chunk. There is no special location in our universe. Isotropic means there's no special direction. Whichever way you look at the universe, it will look mostly the same, at least on a large scale. Literally the day I wrote this script, an article was released that said research found the universe might not be isotropic, as in the expansion rate varies in different places. So take some of this with a grain of salt. Anyways, when we look at images of the observable universe, we can get a somewhat misleading picture. That picture would be a sphere of galaxies which is expanding, and then there's us in the middle. But remember, this is our observable universe. If you move to a new location, you'd have a new sphere of a new observable universe. But it would still look basically the same as before due to the cosmological principle, and with you in the middle, you'd still find everything is expanding away from you. So don't think of the universe as a 3D sphere of galaxies like this. We're not at the center, and neither is the sun. Because actually, there is no center to the universe. People often think there is a center, where the Big Bang happened, and everything is moving away from that point. But that's not what we observe, all things moving away from a central location. We instead observe the universe to be moving away from all locations. Anywhere you look from, you'll find distant galaxies are moving away from you as if you're at the center. And the further away they are, the faster they're moving. So it's kind of like the Big Bang happened everywhere at once. So just don't think of the Big Bang as a traditional explosion. I read in one source that the Big Bang wasn't actually an explosion of matter, but was an explosion of space. Also, on top of all of this, we have not discovered any edge to our universe. If we did, the center could be the point equally far away from that edge or boundary in all directions. But that's just not the case at the moment, so we say there is no center. Now, I used to think that an expanding universe meant, okay, our universe is just all this stuff that's out there, and the convex hole that encloses it, essentially. Then that stuff is just moving away into an empty void, thus the convex hole gets larger, and the universe has expanded. That is not correct. In fact, the stuff of our universe isn't moving through space at all. It's moving with space. If that sounds weird, the famous comparison is with an expanding loaf of raisin bread. The bread is our universe, and the raisins are the stuff inside, like galaxies. As the loaf expands, which corresponds to the universe expanding, the raisins, or galaxies, are getting further away from one another no matter where you look from. If you're here and measure the distance to all nearby galaxies, you'd find those distances are all getting larger, as if you're at the center. But someone else living in this galaxy, measuring all those distances, would also notice them all getting larger. It seemed like everything is expanding away from them as if they're at the center. So everyone gets this impression even though there is no center in regards to the surface. And notice that everything moved with the bread. This would be a raisin moving through the bread, but that isn't what happens with the expansion of this or our universe. Instead, everything moves with that expansion. Locally, gravity wins, by the way, so the raisins don't get ripped apart, just like our atoms aren't separating or the Earth isn't escaping the sun's pull. But on a large scale, distances are increasing. Okay, last thing before we get to the hypersphere universe, we need to understand the word flat. According to experiments, physicists believe the universe is mostly flat with a small margin of error. Yes, there is local curvature since mass warps space-time from general relativity, but on a large scale the universe seems to be flat. That of course does not mean 2D flat, it's what I'll call 3D flat. A piece of paper is 2D flat, whereas the surface, just the surface, of a sphere is 2D but curved. If you started walking parallel to your friend on the surface of a sphere, like Earth, assuming you walk perfectly straight, which means along great circles of that sphere, then you'd eventually meet. It'd be strange, but this is how parallel lines behave on positively curved surfaces, whereas on a truly flat surface, you'd never meet. In both of these cases, you're on a two-dimensional manifold, 
but being in that curved world changes what you'd experience. So there are things you can do to determine what kind of surface you're on. This analogy extends to our universe. If you shine two beams of light parallel to one another, so long as they aren't interrupted, they'll run parallel to each other forever, as far as we can tell. Because of that, we say the universe is three-dimensionally flat. Okay, so far we've seen that it seems like our universe is flat, looks about the same everywhere, has no edge, has no center, and is expanding, regardless of where you look from. So why have some people hypothesized that our universe could be part of a really big four-dimensional hypersphere? Because I mean, our universe is three-dimensional. Yes, time is considered the fourth dimension, but in this video, anytime I say dimension, I mean spatial dimension. So our universe has three spatial dimensions, but a hypersphere has four. Seems like there's already some issue there. However, things work when we consider the surface of a hypersphere. See, in the world of math, the surface of a regular sphere is known as a two-sphere, whereas the entire object, including the inside, is called a three-ball, because it has three dimensions. The surface just has two, though. It looks flat up close, and a flatland creature living in that surface has two degrees of freedom, like moving north or south, and then east and west, or longitude and latitude. But that's it. There's no third degree or jumping off slash digging into the object. This creature's entire universe could be this surface. There'd be no inside or outside. That concept wouldn't even make sense to them. And if the surface is really big, they might never notice that it's actually curved. So there'd be no complaints or limitations for these guys. This would just be their 2D universe where they can move and play however they want. Okay, now take this to the next level. A hypersphere, or a four ball if we include the inside, would have a 3D surface or shell. We can't picture what that looks like, but we can make the comparison. Just imagine this is a four dimensional hypersphere, and all the stuff you see here is just part of the surface, not the inside. That stuff could be our entire universe. It's three dimensional, so we'd be free to move however we want just on that 3D surface. There'd be no limitations, and we wouldn't ask about the inside because it wouldn't actually exist. The entire universe is this surface, and that's where this theory could be consistent. When someone talks about our universe maybe being a hypersphere, they usually mean maybe on a global scale, the 3D universe is just the 3D surface of a 4D hypersphere, and thus it would actually be curved. It's very weird to think about everything in all directions being just the infinitely thin skin of a higher dimensional object. But just take it down a dimension to get a bit of that intuition. So on that note, let's compare what would happen on a 3D sphere that we all know of and a 4D hypersphere with a 3D universe on its surface. Now for the left object, we know a flatland creature living in that surface would perceive it as two-dimensionally flat, assuming they were relatively small in size. I know this animation doesn't depict a flatlander, but just pretend. Now going up a dimension, this means a creature like us living within the surface of a hypersphere would perceive it as three-dimensionally flat, if that sphere were really big. So this first observation wouldn't be too surprising, even if, on a global scale, our universe was curved. Then if that 3D object had a bunch of flat 2D stars and galaxies spread out evenly among the surface, that means a creature on that surface would have a circular region as their observable universe. This is what they could see. And if they moved to a new location, they'd have a new observable universe that looks basically the same because of the even distribution of the 2D stars and galaxies. Take this up a dimension, and that means on a hypersphere surface, our observable universe would not be a circle, but basically a sphere, technically with some higher dimensional curvature. But if the galaxies are evenly spread out on the hypersphere, then the observable universe would look mostly the same no matter where you are, which is exactly what we observe. So the second point also seems to be consistent with a hyperspherical universe. Then since we're talking about only the surfaces of these objects, there would be no edge in either the 3D or 4D case, which is also consistent with what we observe. And another property of these surfaces is that there is no center. 
Sure, there's a center of a sphere when talking about the entire thing, like a three or four ball, but we're not. These are just the surfaces, the two or three sphere. That's all that exists. And both of these have no center or edge. And by the way, on the hypersphere, we wouldn't perceive that curvature at all. If you shined a beam of light or observed an object moving in deep space, you'd think it's going straight, but it'd really be curving in a higher dimension, where it could eventually come back to where it started from. And that would resolve the idea of an object just moving into the void of space forever. Then lastly, let's say that hypersphere is expanding. That would mean all the stars and galaxies we observe would be getting further away from one another while simply moving with the universe, not through it. And no matter where you look from, you'd find those distances are increasing, as if you're at the center, which matches exactly what we observe. So, boom, QED, the universe is on the surface of a hypersphere. All right, now, in reality, a lot of ideas in cosmology should always be preceded by the words, we think that, or we have evidence of. Because the thing is, we often don't know for sure. And there's debate on whether we'll ever know. The universe could be a hypersphere. It could be flat, it could be infinite, or it could have an edge. We don't know. So let me carefully say, we have reason to think our universe is not the surface of a hypersphere, despite all these truth bombs I was totally dropping. So why? Well, first of all, we have taken measurements of the curvature of the universe, and we found it to be really flat. See, on a sphere, it's possible to walk straight, take two 90 degree turns, and end up back where you started. That is impossible on a flat surface. So this is an experiment you could do to determine whether you're on a curved surface or not without ever leaving it. But notice the triangle here, because on a positively curved surface, the angles add to more than 180 degrees, always. And that's the experiment researchers have done. They've measured the angles of really big triangles in our universe, using the cosmic microwave background, and found these angles to add up to just about 180 degrees, indicating flatness. If the universe were on a hypersphere, then it'd be an extremely large hypersphere, where the observable universe would be a small speck on it. So it's just more reasonable for us to say the universe is flat. Next up, several analogies you see in cosmology get criticized because while they might be helpful in one aspect, they can cause confusion elsewhere. For example, with the loaf of raisin bread, it'd be fair to ask, as the loaf or universe expands, what's it expanding into? If this loaf is the entire universe, what's all this stuff out here before the universe even gets there? This is tricky, but the expansion is intrinsic. It's the scale of space itself that changes, and thus it does not expand into anything or require space to exist outside of it. In a previous video, I discussed the metric tensor, which, oversimplified, helps us make corrections to the Pythagorean theorem on warp surfaces. On a flat surface, Pythag works and we can find the distance between two points, no problem. On warp surfaces, we run into issues, and that's where the metric tensor comes in. So when we say the universe is expanding, we really mean the metric tensor is changing. So it's more like distances between points are increasing without space physically expanding into anything. That loaf of raisin bread gave us a decent mental image, but as with all of these analogies, it wasn't perfect. Then if the universe is flat and infinite, which seems to be the most common belief, it's reasonable to say the universe would look mostly the same no matter where we look, assuming a fairly uniform distribution. So this here doesn't necessarily point to any higher dimensional curvature. Plus, a truly infinite universe would have no edge or center. Then instead of the loaf of raisin bread example, another one you might see is that of an infinite grid expanding, where it's not expanding into anything since it's infinite, but rather distances between points are increasing as in no matter where you look from, the universe would be expanding. If you use that as your go-to analogy, then that would resolve this last bullet point, as this could also be true in a flat universe. So although all of these seem to maybe work in a hyperspherical universe, there's no reason to make any conclusions, because these can all be true in a three-dimensionally flat universe. I've even read some comments that say sometimes physicists don't really care about the extra dimensions, if the physics works in three. 
Honestly, I think most of this video was stuff we don't know with 100% certainty, but realize these theories don't come out of nowhere. There's evidence and there are experiments that at least point towards one theory being more likely than another. And if you want to look further into the current theories and mathematics that describe our universe, you can do so over at Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. Two courses they have that directly relate to what we've seen here would be gravitational physics and astronomy. In these you'll explore the shape of the universe, what it would mean to have a flat versus open versus closed universe, and even how this is all linked to the presence of dark matter. They even cover some interesting future events and what the fate of our universe looks like, which I also find really interesting. And all courses come with intuitive visuals and animations, which for me is one of the most important tools for gaining a true understanding of advanced math and physics concepts. Then on top of what you've seen, you can dive into advanced differential equations, the physics of waves and light, group theory, and plenty of other courses in math, science, and engineering. Plus the first 200 people to sign up using the link below, or by going to brilliant.org slash zackstar, will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. And with that, I'm going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon, social media links are down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.